Hello friends, here is Luis and today I want to talk about something that was prompted by a brief conversation I had with a friend. Hola amigos, les cuento brevemente que voy a seguir subiendo videos en inglés hasta que se llene la página que abrí en ese idioma. And something that I have seen all around. So it seems to me that if somebody wants to explore the path of faith, it has to start over here, just acknowledging that there is such a thing as truth. Because it's very popular nowadays to have the belief that this friend expressed. He's in a, in a search and said, you know, I'm reading C.S. Lewis and I want to get informed, but, you know, I don't think there is such a thing as truth. There's only impressions we have. And I answered, well, maybe you should start over there. Just if you want to question everything, because he said that right before that. I said, well, question that. Question that. Is that true? I mean, that's the actually the humorous way to respond to somebody saying, there is not such a thing as truth. Only impressions. Is, is that true? That statement in itself wants to be true. And the problem is that it doesn't follow the principle of non-contradiction. In, in other words, it contradicts itself. If you follow that and you say, there are no truths, if that is true, ergo, there is true. It's, it's a really bad place to start. It's, it's like you start already in confusion. And the thing is that this friend, like anybody proclaiming this, have true in their life. There are truths in their life that they go by. And for some reason, they are not putting that out there or not realizing it when they go in this kind of existential, metaphysical, however you want to call it, search. Because they will recognize mathematical truths, right? Two plus two is four. And all the mathematical truths that allow us to go into space and come back, we need that, but those are true. Then we have physical truths, you know, the laws of gravity and all the other things. And geometry also has certain truths that you can build a skyrocket, a bridge over two faraway shores. And I mean, you can build a lot of things on truth, on truths of that. And then there are moral truths, you know, things that we share, we know. We, we, we have that, well, you can call it impression there, but it's in, in all humanity, you know. Somebody comes through the door or something and with a stick and start beating a child of somebody out of nowhere. We feel that that's wrong. That is wrong, right? Um, and so on and so forth. We can find more of that. We can find truths of time and space. This person is walking from, from the gym where I was talking to him, uh, three miles home. And for that, he is counting on some truths. He believes that if he walks there and nothing happens in his body, uh, any catastrophe or any catastrophe in the environment that prevent him from getting home, he will get home. In fact, he probably has an estimate on time on how long it will take him to get home. So he's relying on those truths. And we can go on and on and on. There is such a thing as truth, but nowadays it is very popular in this postmodern world to have that stance and very nebulous stance, which is not new. You read it in the Bible when Pontio Pilatos, and never pronounced Pilate. Yeah, I never say it right in English. 
in Spanish is Poncio Pilatos, Poncio Pilot, I think. In any case, when he is faced with Jesus, it's a beautiful dialogue that they have there. And it's, it's really worth reading. And there it is. The person that is there to impart justice, ask him when, when Jesus uh, mentions truth, he says, Pontius Pont Pilate, he says, what is true? What is true? Quid est veritas in the Latin version. Quid est veritas. I did a video in Spanish about that. Quid est veritas. He is already a postmodern of our time. You know, the Roman Empire, the civilization around the Mediterranean has reached that point. So, for anybody interested in anything, I would say, but in this case, it's more, is Christianity true or not? Okay, first step is you got to make sure that you believe you can find the truth, that there is truth and that you can find it or we can find it, not, all, not just by ourselves, but by others that have done the research and by looking at historical facts and by good reasoning. And you have to believe, therefore, that this world is to a great degree intelligible to us. Nature is to a great degree, intelligible to us. That's why we can plant things and, and mix the plants and crops and then study insects and study the mineral content of uh, the soil and change it this way, that way. We can do a lot of things. It, it is intelligible, intelligible. That's why we know so many things. In any case, I wanted to talk about that because that is very important. And it's very important to realize it yourself, that you're lying to yourself. If you're saying there is not, not such a thing as truth, just impressions, you're lying to yourself because you are relying on truths in, of all kinds. It, it just have to take a look at your life, unless you are, I don't know, in a mental asylum or something. Cause you... So I wanted to mention that. I think that, that going with that metaphor of this friend walking back home, we can compare it to walking in our, in our, on our path and going towards something. You want to find truth. And so each step is if you're searching for a higher truth, for a very transcendental truth, it was for me like that. I was very skeptic. And so my own path has been one of removing all falsehood that I had. I did not know where I was going to end. I did not know that I will end up being Christian and baptizing Catholic. I did not know where I was going. I was just entertained and fascinated by truth. Then it started to percolate this Christianity thing. So, so what about that? You know, so I was very against it, but I was interested in finding truth. Sometimes it's not that you find 100% truth, but this is the best that we know. And this is a good reasoning towards that. Right, without superstition, and um, there are better arguments, be better evidence towards this. You know, it depends on what we're talking about. But yeah, there is truth. And so you better believe it. <laughs> you better believe there is truth. If you are looking for truth, my friend. So I can go on, I think, about this. Let me see, because I had, I found out that in Summa Theologica, Thomas Aquinas is such a great thinker, and he loves Aristotle. And this is also another thing that happened with Christianity. And that's why we can argue and think because it is the marriage of reason and faith. Thomas Aquinas brings Aristotle. St. Augustine brings Plato. And we, we, can, we can think, and this is in Latin and Spanish. So 
Let me see, I do my best in English. He says, it's self-evident that truth exists because whoever denies its existence is conceding that it exists because if truth did not exist, it will be truth that truth does not exist. And of course, if something is true, like that last sentence, it follows that truth must exist for him to say that. I'm adding that part, that true truth must exist. I'll read it in Latin because I just love it. Praeteria, veritatem est per se notum, qui negat veritatem esse, concedit veritatem esse. Si enim veritas non est, verum est veritatem non esse. Si autem est aliquid verum, oportet quod veritas si. Okay, friends, friend, friends, this is it. This is what I wanted to share with you. A very spontaneous drink in San Mate. This is a, a tea from Argentina. You drink it in this cup. Although there are others with a different form. You have a mouthpiece. And you go like this. It's good. And usually you share it with others. So every time I do a video, with Mate, it's like I'm sharing it. It's a communal thing most of the time. So I hope you have a good Sunday today and that you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments about it and see you next time.